special welcome to you. My name is Elizabeth Frick, and I am the pastor here, and it is my joy to serve this church. So welcome to the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, right here in the middle of summer when it's going to be 100 degrees. We also want to welcome those of you who are joining us from home. Say hello. It's good to see you. We're glad you're here. So let us center ourselves in Christ as we take a deep breath in and exhale and bring ourselves into the presence of God. I invite Faye forward to bring us our announcements today. Well, the green light. That means we're on, folks. Welcome to each and every one of you. And uh, today is your, um, your second persona as mission people. This is the kickoff to the People's Pantry, which occurs on Tuesday, but takes a lot of work starting this afternoon. And so um, any help that you can give, including your prayers, we really appreciate. And the wonderful thing is it's our third anniversary. And those of you that um, did the paperwork exactly three years ago, remember all of that work out in the field, and we met out in the field, and we carried everything out in the field, and the folks were able to shop, and things have changed dramatically. One of the things we didn't do then was we were not um, imposed by the rules of the uh, government food distribution. We were doing it on our own, and we were getting some help from the food bank, but it wasn't the kind where the food came from the, the federal government. Now we are a part of a team that distributes food from the federal government, and that's why there's so many different regulations that those of us that are in the know know, and the rest of you just can just come along like you're in a little side boat with us and enjoy, and Martha will do the paperwork. <laughs> She's here today, so we want to be sure that you, uh, she gets, gets on it. So today is the drop-off zone, and we changed the time. For those of you that shop after church, we will be here right after church, of course, but to receive your items from 12.30 until 3. So come along any time during that time and drop off what you have. And in particular, people have been letting me know they're bringing this and that and this and that. Some of our numbers are going up, but we really will need bread today and just your basic sliced sandwich bread that you... Um, get that is the least expensive it works just fine 
And you, of course, then we get more in that lane. We're serving 120 servings, so we need a lot of everything. We do need some more cake or brownie mixes. And um, at this time, we can use rice um, and pasta that we would throw into an assortment because we just don't have tons of it right now. And tuna, we may not give it out today, but it would start to seed next month because we'll need 120 and we, it's hard to get to that. The food bank is having trouble getting tuna as well, so your help with that would be appreciated. And also today is a finance committee right after church. Um, get some treats and then we'll have our business meeting and then move on from there for our work. Tomorrow, anyone that would like to come at 9.30 for the first prep for the, the People's Pantry, come on over and let me know if you're going to come. Some of you have already emailed me. I'm not sure why that is, but we just have to know we're going to have enough people and not uh, sick us on you trying to get more people. <laughs> and then some people just show up and that's okay too. A uh, warning for those of you that like to do the afternoon shift, we are kind of making it all done in the morning now. We'll let you know if you signed up for the afternoon shift if we don't need you to come. Kind of would be great to work towards that for those of us that are there for three solid days. It, it does help. All right, and then uh, tomorrow at 4 o'clock, our Bible study group finished up with the book on forgiveness. And Joe is going to lead us through the book of Galatians. And we'd love to have some new folks join us tomorrow, even if you don't have the book yet. Um, the book can get you can get through Amazon, but you don't know when it's going to come either. But come on the Zoom. There was a link uh, posted this week from Jacob and Joe related to the book of Galatians. And then Tuesday at um, 9 o'clock, we arrive to get ready to distribute the food. And the food can be dis is distributed by the sign 10 to 1130. We start sooner if we can, but 10 to 1130. You can come and get booster shots or your original shots or a COVID test as well uh, starting at 9 o'clock on Tuesday. So that's a great service that we have. Wednesday, the 17th, is Be Our Guest. Barbara and her crew are preparing, as you can see, the sign out front to uh, prepare about 60 meals to distribute to hungry folks for them to take home with them. At 6.30 that evening is the Creed, continuing the Creed Bible study with Pastor Elizabeth, and we'll let you know when we're switching to a new study so you can join in. Those of us on Staff Parish will be meeting via Zoom at 4 o'clock on Friday. In between all of those, hopefully you all get a nap. <laughs> in the 105, 106, 107 degree weather. Joe's group um, has these affirmations this week for us. God, have mercy upon me. Forgive me for the ways I've given offense to you, whether in thought, word, or deed, or by things that I've left undone. The third one is, help me to be merciful to those who wrong me and to extend grace freely to others. And again, God have mercy upon me and you as well. Our birthday day this week is Friday. Two of our ladies both here this morning are going to be celebrating their birthdays. Dawn Anderson, wave your hand on, your happy birthday hand, and Debbie Hicks. Raise your hand, Debbie. Happy, happy birthday to you two ladies on the same day. One being older than the other, but we won't. We won't go into that. <laughs> yeah, maybe that too, huh? So today is an anniversary day. So it's a ruby anniversary. What do you know about that? How many is that? Six. Is six? Forty. 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 And I'm looking through the audience here, and I think they both took the day off. Kim and Ken Silva today, their 40th anniversary. So if you, if you see any of them this week, give them a heads up and a happy anniversary. So I looked up uh, 52 years, there's no such thing. It just says, well, it's just 52 years. <laughs> and I guess you, you uh, play on the gold then, you know, with that. And that's John and Martha McCorkle uh, tomorrow their 52nd wedding anniversary. So if you see them, uh, let them know that too. 
Just a heads up about the future here at um, in Adams Hall, Friday, September the 2nd. Every one of you is invited to Messy Church. Bring along your grandkids, bring along your kids, bring along your neighbors. Celebrate Messy Church and Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. And the walls come tumbling down, so I have no idea what they've cooked up for that. Today, Peggy is going to continue giving out directories, the printed copy of the directory, if you don't have yours yet. After church, be sure to stop in and get one from her. And as often as you change any information, just let her know she will update it. You can get every, every one of us that has an email in that directory can get to the directory online. And you can see the color photos there as well. So um, be sure to get your information from Peggy or Felicia, either one. So this week, uh, oh, also if anybody can help after the finance meeting or after refreshments, we'd love for you to join us for refreshments um, to help us maybe set up a few tables for the People's Pantry to get ready for that. The round tables will stay up and then we just need to get the um, eight foot tables uh, set up for that. Desmond Tutu, he was thinking about us this weekend. Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. Amen. We'll be a part of that this week. Have a great worship. Thank you, Faye. Good morning, everyone. Please join me. We did such a great job last week in Great is the Lord. We're going to sing it one more time this week. So if you can join me in singing Great is the Lord, you may stay seated or rise as the Spirit moves you.
worship today is, I'm going to tell you, me, and then Felicia, and then all of you. That's the order, because <laughs> we change it almost every week. Friends, we know that what God desires of us. We know what we're called to do. We are, we are called to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with God. We gather this morning to remind each other about that. Even when the world is greedy and harsh. Even when we are aware of our own securities and fears. God calls us beyond all of that to generosity and compassion. To remember that now is always the right time to be present to God's calling. So, so with thanks, thanks in our, our hearts, hearts let, let us worship God. God. Amen. I think we don't have littles here today, so we're going to skip over this portion of the service. We've had a great three weeks up till today, so they all took a break at the same time to go to soccer, <laughs> so, which is at least where half of our kiddos are. So let us um, start with the prayer song. Please join me in singing Sanctuary. We'll sing it three times. Gary Ben for doing that in place of his mom today, and I want to thank Jay Harmer for being in the back doing our visuals. Usually Tom Steinbach is doing that. So thank you so much to both of you. Um, I'm going to invite us into the offertory invitation. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, Lord of life. Amen. I'm going to invite our ushers forward to receive our tithes and offerings today.
please join me in prayer and as I pray I'm inviting the ushers to bring the gifts forward. Holy and gracious God, thank you for these gifts and for all of the gifts of our lives. May we use these gifts faithfully for your work in this world. May they go to feed hungry mouths and feed hungry hearts and serve and serve and serve you. We lift this prayer in Jesus' strong and loving name. Amen. Amen. Verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who sent me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly and he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Words of God, words of life. Holy and gracious God, thank you for these words, these reminders. The reminders that our things do not define us. The reminders that our love, love and life in you, that is what does truly define each of us. As we look at this text today, I ask you to grant me wisdom. And I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. I lift this prayer in Jesus' strong and loving name. Amen. Amen. This is such an interesting text for this time in the world when we think about a world that is kind of, I mean, how many of you during the pandemic spent more time pointing and clicking on Amazon than usual? <laughs> how easy is it to part with our money? How easy is it to spend money? How easy is it to just sort of imagine ourselves as moneyed beings, right? And so when I hear this younger son, or whoever this guy is, saying, hey, I'd like my brother to split the inheritance with me, and so Jesus, you with the uh, almighty power, can you tell my brother to get, you know, get real with the program? Because we need to split this up. I think we can all kind of understand it, right? You want fairness, and you want to accumulate wealth, and you want to feel comfortable, and you want to know that everything is going to be okay, and in American society, the way we live, that is so defined by money. Amen? It is. I was raised that either you, well, this was how I really was raised, so, you know, that was something, you know, oh dear. 
that if you marry someone who has a lot of money, you're not going to have to worry. That was a female thing, and I say frequently that I grew up in the 50s and the 80s, so, you know, I just know that not everybody in my generation had this experience. But, or you have to get a really good job and be very successful. And that is what should motivate your whole life so that you will be comfortable in your old age. How many of you heard that message in some way in your life growing up? Yeah, that's a pretty common message. And it is definitely founded and grounded in our world today and in the ways that we are raised and called to live. And also this American idea that we are supposed to be totally independent. Amen? Independent. So pull yourself up by your what? You know it. Right? So I would say these are days in which we consider our wealth and we think about who we are related to our wealth. And maybe if Jesus were to come along and we were having a dispute within our families, we might ask him to fix the dispute so that the wealth could be fairly distributed. I relate to that guy. It's true. And I love Jesus' response. Who sent me to be the arbiter over you? I wasn't brought here to discuss this matter. What did Jesus come to do? Save the lost. <laughs> Save the lost. Love. Teach. Preach to bring the good news of, of God into people's lives and to transform Judaism, right? To transform religious practice. That's Jesus. And people are going to bring their world problems to Jesus' feet every day. And his job isn't just to admonish them, but it is to point them toward God. All right? So I want you to think on a question as we go today. And that question is, what is demanding or taking your life away? You'll know where this goes soon. What is demanding your life or taking your life away right now? In the parable and in the story, it is money, right? But Things that take our lives away can be anything. I have a little list here. Could be criticism, judgment, perfectionism, money, or collections, or fear, or worry, or anxiety, or success, or reputation, or the desire to win. These things can take our lives away. And we all know our personal relationship with those kinds of things, right? I mean, some of us have voices in our heads that tell us constantly we're not good enough, right? And those voices take some of our lives away. Our desire to accumulate wealth so that we can be sheltered and shielded from any bad thing happening, that can take our life away. Our need to be, I don't know, tall enough, thin enough, good enough, fast enough, get better grades, all of those things that define us by something external can take our lives away. Now, in this text today, we hear the words, in the parable, the land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he gets all self-righteous you know, righteous and feels really good about all the storage plans he has. And he can relax now. And God said in this parable, this very night, your life is being demanded of you. Now, I did a tiny bit of research on that particular line. And that particular line can be actually translated, they are demanding your life from you. So it's not actually God necessarily, as it is translated here, but they, meaning those things that you have stored up for your old age, are demanding your life from you. What happens when we get so busy accumulating our things and keeping ourselves safe and listening to those dark, hard voices in our heads and struggling with our value or worth or any of those things? 
what happens when we get wrapped up in that? We don't have the space in our lives for God. And we go back to our call to worship. What does the Lord require of us? But we do justice, love, and walk. It's really that simple, right? These are the actions of a people of faith, not wrapped up in our possessions and our things and our comfortable retirement. Now, that doesn't mean that if you have a comfortable retirement and many of possessions and things, that you are taken up by that completely, amen? Right? That means that how we live in relationship to those things indicates where we are with God and in our lives. Matthew, it says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. How do we use what we have? How do we utilize that voice in our head that pushes us down? Can we better utilize the things that keep us from God so that we can get closer to God? Is that possible? Is that what we've been longing for all along? I hope so. <laughs> I mean, all in all, being close to God versus being close to my stuff, who wins in that equation? There's a right answer. <laughs> God wins. God wins. Following Jesus, getting to that place where we are right with God and in right relationship with people, that's what wins. And we take ourselves back to that guy who's struggling because his brother hasn't shared the inheritance, and we know that his, his struggle isn't, isn't a struggle for faithfulness or depth or closeness to God. It is a struggle for something else entirely. Probably ego, but I wasn't there. I don't know. Our days are numbered in some very real ways. You don't know how long you have to live. And certainly our lives may be demanded of us, or maybe our lives are ebbing away from us slowly by the things that have kept us from God. But how we spend those days and how we use our resources and how we choose to walk with God is always what matters most. I am so blessed to serve this congregation where I can look out at each one of you and see the ways that your lives reflect these values already. I see Lorraine, who brings us a guided meditation and is so excited about fundraising. I've never met anyone so excited about fundraising, you guys. <laughs> I look out, I see Faye, who calls us to action. I see people who paint rocks on Mondays to raise money for when we have our craft fair. I see all of you working and working and working, and some of you are populating committees so that the, the inner workings of the church can work. I see families who spend hours and hours giving back to this church and to God, and I see so much faithfulness right here. And the deal is, this message that I'm, that I'm sharing with you right now, I don't necessarily think that you need to hear it, but you know someone who does. Amen? You know someone who does. And they'll look and see how you're living your life, and they might even ask you, why are you so happy? Why, why do you have so much purpose in your life? What is it? What is it? And maybe you will know that the response is, I choose to focus my life toward God and to follow Jesus. And maybe that'll make a difference to them. I hope it does. So today as we think about this message, and we imagine what demands or takes away our lives, let us also know what gives us life. Thanks be to God. And we are going to finish with, it is the cry of my heart to follow you. Please rise as you feel like you want.
place, I hope you go in peace knowing that God's love surrounds you each and every moment of your day. May you know that Jesus is your friend and your teacher and our Savior, and that we need him to guide us along the way. And may you experience the Holy Spirit dwelling deep within you, comforting you when you need comfort, inspiring you when you need inspiration, and giving you a little shove when you need to move forward in your life. So go in peace, knowing that God is with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you.